just to give you all a heads up, I'm bad at this game. And because I'm bad at this game, Leon and Claire will be limping and dying 99% of the time in my gameplay footage. But hey, what matters is I finish the game, right? <laughs> huh. I don't consider myself a big Resident Evil fan, but I've enjoyed RE2, 3, 4, 7, and Remake 1. So what about Remake 2? No surprises here. It's brilliant. I already had big expectations when I saw the trailers and when I played the one-shot demo. Oh yeah, I've also played the original RE2. Only as Claire though, and I don't remember everything about the game. I was in my pre-teens and I decided to play as the pink girl with the ponytail because... reasons? I don't know. But I won't be comparing both games too much for that very reason. Just like the original, Remake 2 takes place in Raccoon City during a zombie apocalypse. It stars Leon Kennedy, a raccoon police department cop whose first day on the job is when the outbreak occurs, and Claire Redfield, a college student. Yeah, that's it. But she's the younger sister of Chris Redfield, one of RE1's protagonists, which makes her important. She's also pretty hardcore, which makes up for her, um, lack of awesome backstory. You'll be going through mostly the same areas despite having the choice to pick between those characters. But the biggest difference would be how the story plays out and some minor gameplay changes that I'll discuss later. Leon and Claire will be meeting different people in their own storylines, with the ultimate goal being to escape Raccoon City. I was actually surprised at how relatable the characters felt in Remake 2, compared to the previous Resident Evil titles that I've played. Sure, they still have their cool action hero personalities, but now they feel like real people with their own thoughts and feelings. Even the characters that you kind of forget about when you play the original game get more fleshed out here. The atmosphere in Remake 2 really takes your breath away. Like, literally, remember to breathe. Capcom did an awesome job in incorporating that old school Resident Evil feel into the remake. Going through each hallway and room filled me with paranoia which I believe is just as effective, if not more than the in-your-face horror. There are jump scares in Remake 2, but they never feel cheap. I found myself constantly guessing whether something would pop out of nowhere, and I'm pretty sure I was wrong like more than half the time, which definitely made things even scarier. Now I rarely replay games as soon as I finish them. But I consider Remake 2 a big exception. You can choose to play the game by starting with Leon and ending with Claire, or the other way around. Or you could just have one playthrough, but I don't recommend it because you'll be missing out on a lot of details. Depending on what you choose, there will be differences in the story and character interactions. So the game has enough variety going on for multiple playthroughs. You'll have to play the game two times to see the true ending. I love how the combat can be both action-packed and thrilling. There are a humble amount of weapons that can be used to deal with each monster in the game. From flashbangs and grenades to shotguns and knives. Speaking of knives, I thought I could just save ammo by hacking away at zombies, but apparently they break after a while. Throughout my playthrough, I decided to have a couple of knives around. They became really useful when I needed to escape from enemies. The only problem would be retrieving them, so yeah. In Resident Evil, you usually start in one location that you'll spend a few hours in, finding resources and managing them. Solving puzzles will give you access to new rooms and areas to progress through the main story. Reading notes and flyers will give you more backstory on characters and details of the outbreak. In addition to that, they provide various clues to unlocking things like padlocks and safes, which reward you with supplies or even powerful weapons. If you're new to the series, be prepared for a lot of micromanagement. From reviewing files to inspecting items, there's a lot to process as you play. 
The biggest one would be managing your inventory items. The top three things that you'll be fiddling around with the most are puzzle items, herbs, and gunpowder. So for those of you who don't know, they are plants that magically heal your character and provide a few buffs. There are three types of herbs. To break it down, green herbs heal you, blue herbs get rid of poison, and red herbs don't do anything. Okay, red herbs do do something, but you have to combine it with the other two herbs first. Green plus blue to give health boosts and poison antidotes. Green and red for full health restoration, and you get the idea. A new addition to Remake 2 is gunpowder. I mean, technically it's not new because it first appeared in RE3, but the original RE2 never had it, so... The powder is basically used to craft ammunition. Just like the herbs, there's different types of gunpowder. For instance, yellow high-grade gunpowder is only found in Leon's root and can be used to make gunshot shells and mag ammo while white high-grade gunpowder is only found in Claire's root, which is used to make acid rounds and submachine gun ammo. If you haven't tried playing old-school Resident Evil games, all of that might seem like a lot to take in. But I don't think that would be the case once you start playing the game. You'll quickly find good ways to manage your resources while surviving everything that the game throws at you. You can gradually increase your inventory space by finding additional pouches, and the maps make everything so much easier. The game automatically marks spots with locked doors, places you've been to, and items you haven't picked up. This is incredibly useful for people like me who have horrible memory. Apart from the story, there are additional modes like the fourth survivor, or that block of tofu? I don't know. I never even knew he existed until that sneak peek at the end of the one-shot demo. There was also a DLC that released called Ghost Survivors, but I won't talk about it because I'm not too interested in time trial-like minigames for titles like Resident Evil. I did try playing the fourth survivor though. You just had to survive and run through the map as fast as you can while gunning down or avoiding hordes of zombies. But I'm sure these modes would be fun for people who want more content, or simply a challenge. As much as I like Remake 2, it's time to talk about some things that bugged me. Starting with the graphics, specifically the models. Don't get me wrong, they look gorgeous with excellent motion capture to boot. Still, I can't help but notice how uncanny some of the characters look. I know the facial capture and the textures look great but sometimes they look like someone sucked their souls out. I guess you can't hide the fact that the outbreak is really taking a toll on them. And about the tyrant, he was terrifying when he first appeared, but he eventually turned into a big, unbeatable guy chasing you to hinder your progress cliche. It was especially apparent in my B playthrough of Claire's campaign. Like, come on man, let me push those bookcases already. And did I mention how difficult the second run of Claire is? I felt so naive. Okay, I've played Leon's route, so Claire's is going to be a walk in the par- Oh god! Why are there so many liquors? Well, it's fine. I mean, I know where to go anyway. All in all, you might have guessed it already. Resident Evil 2 sets a really high bar for remakes. It improves and adds upon the original game, making it a great entry for first-timers and a nostalgic yet surprising return for fans. I hope you all enjoyed the video and let me know what you thought about Resident Evil 2 Remake. I'll be ending my AAA game streak for now, so I'll be going back to indies for maybe a video or two. Hope all of you will look forward to it.